In this video, I want to show you how you can utilize quantization to make sure that when you trigger clips using Ableton in a live performance, they will stay in sync, even if you have higher latency or you may have pressed a button slightly offbeat, maybe too early. Essentially, what quantization does to help you in that regard is that if you trigger a clip close to the beat that you want it to play on, it will instead just play it on that beat rather than the moment you pressed it, thus compensating for any errors in playing offbeat. So let's check it out. As you can see, I've got my MPK Mini here, but you can use pretty much any MIDI controller to do this tutorial. I'll just be using the pads on the MPK Mini. If I really wanted to, I could use any of the keys. Um, all I need to use are some kind of button that sends MIDI signal. So I'm going to start off by going to the browser over here on the left and just bringing in some of the samples that I have prepared for this tutorial. So I'm going to go over to my tutorial samples. I'll just preview them for you here really quick so you can see what they sound like. So we've got some bass and chord layer stabs. Some basic drum loops. So I'm going to get rid of these MIDI tracks because I don't really need them. And I'm just going to bring all the bays and chord stabs into one track. And all of the drum loops, I just hold shift there to do that and click down at the bottom. Let's bring them here. So now if we play it, we can preview if we launch the whole scene. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to individually assign these audio clips that we have to be triggered by certain pads on the MPK Mini. Uh, so to do that, first thing I want to do is come into Ableton and press the MIDI button up here. And this enables MIDI map mode, which essentially allows me to look at any parameters or buttons in Ableton and sync them to any inputs that I have, any buttons, knobs, or whatever, or keys that I have on a MIDI device uh, for here, my MPK Mini. So now that I have MIDI map mode enabled, I'm just going to click on the sample. So let's say this first one, this first drum loop over here, I'm going to assign it to this top pad. The second drum loop, I'm going to assign it here. Third one. And then the fourth one, just like that. Similarly, for the stabs, the bays and chord stabs, I'm going to assign this, the first one to this pad up here. Second one over here. And now I'm going to exit out of MIDI map mode. Now, if I make sure I stop everything by clicking up here. So all of the, or actually if I, I can actually stop them over here. If I press these stop buttons on the same track, it will make sure that that, uh, that clip, if it's looping, it will stop. So now nothing is playing. And what I can do is I can start off. So that's mapped to that. So all of my samples are mapped there. And then if I, Test out my other ones. All right, so we're good to go. So now the next thing that I want to do is I, I want to actually show you some of these clip launch options over here um, and the sample options. So when I click on these ones on the left, these are my drum loops. I can solo them. So. What I want you to notice is that they're all looping and also that their quantization is set to global. So just keep, sort of keep note of that for now. I want these drum loops to continue looping after I've only triggered them once. So by default, that's what's going on here. If I just press this pad, it's going to keep looping that drum loop. I do not I do not want the same thing to occur for my um my chord samples over here. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to select all of them and then I'm going to disable loop. So now let's say if I trigger this drum loop over here. Actually let me un like on solo it. See, it doesn't loop. 
So you can notice that I've been pressing these loops, or sorry, triggering these samples, and they seem to be totally in sync and they don't really have any issues. Uh, that's because their quantization settings are, again, by default set to global. If I go into all of these samples and if I select them all, I could select them individually if I wanted to, but if I select them all here and I go to this quantization section under launch, which by the way, if you're not seeing this, you just have to press this button down over here and I'll show you the launch options. I'm going to set the quantization to none. And what this will do is this means it will trigger that sample the moment I press it. So let's try it out and see what it's like. So it's actually instantaneous from when I press it. But the problem is if um, I can show you, if I go into preferences, I'm actually working with a slightly higher latency right now. I've set my buffer size to pretty high and I'm sitting at about an overall latency of 23 milliseconds. So I'm actually very likely to make errors in terms of staying in beat if I am not using any quantization. If I'm trying to trigger this sample and trying to continuously go throughout the performance, it might sound offbeat and I can demonstrate that to you uh, if I try to, let's say, continuously play it. So. So you'll see there's these tiny little hiccups there and to sort of eliminate them, what I can ensure is if I go to quantization, uh, again, select all of these, and I set it to, let's say, 116, it's going to make sure that it aligns with a 16th notes uh, beat, like rhythm alignment any time that I press this um, while the track is playing. So now... Even if I'm a little bit offbeat, it's it's gonna sound okay. And I can even try going to preferences and turning up the buffer size a bit more. So let's say now we have 45 milliseconds, which is pretty huge latency. And I can still manage to stay in beat, which I think is, is pretty awesome. It's important to note that because I'm using a larger buffer size and I have some higher latency, I can demand more from my system. Remember, that's, that's a pretty awesome thing. It means you can have way more live instruments, uh, way more virtual instruments running, way more effects, uh, just a lot more going on since your computer is um, under less strain. So that's an advantage of having a higher buffer size. And also, because of quantization, we can do more and we can still stay in sync while we're performing live. So that's important to remember. So now what I'm going to do is just show you how I can do like a quick impromptu performance uh, using the samples that sort of got set up. And I'm just going to assign an effect. I'm actually going to go into my browser, go to audio effects. And don't worry if you don't understand this part. Again, there'll be a tutorial much later in the future where I go more in depth with bringing in effects change and setting them up with your MIDI controllers, etc. But for now, I just want to show you um, I can add this extra element of, uh, of performance to this. So I'm just going to drag this auto filter here to this track, the second track. Uh, make sure you have the second track selected. I'm going to go into MIDI map mode. I'm going to select this knob and assign it here to that knob. I'm going to set the shape to this, change the rate to 1 16th, got that full amount. And now when I trigger the sample, I move this knob, get that cool effect. All right, so let's just mess around with it and see if we can have some fun. <clears throat> As you can see, it's, it's always staying in beat.
sort of it for this video. But yeah, so that's sort of it for this video. Um, and as you can see, that was that was fun. It, it didn't take too much for me to get to a point there. I mean, admittedly, having those uh, loops handy, but eventually, throughout my tutorial series, you'll also learn how to build and create loops like that so you can use them in these types of impromptu style performances and eventually build tracks out of them. But, but that's much later. Um, anyways, yeah, thanks for watching.